And all right, so Ron, yeah. let's talk a little bit about who you are first. Who are you? What do you do? And then we'll go from there. Well, uh, the master of the dark realm, which uh, which means that I am an after and a gothic illusionist, and I make dark, sticky fun for you fine people out there. All my uh, all the dark, sticky people, you know, which is dark culture, everything like that, and everything that, that comes along with it. But that's what I do. I, I started years ago, and y most people don't they can't see it now. But when I started, it was very traditional. It was like you know, bad form of wearing tuxes and birds and bunnies and and you know, crap like that. It was just, it was, you know, uh, and then I got to a point where that was no longer interesting to me or my contemporaries. And a, a good friend said, you know what? She goes, you're way more interesting off stage than on. And at that point, a light went off and I'm like, I got to change this all up. So I was always inspired by horror films, sci-fi, comic books, weird stuff. I just love dark, weird things. And that became the inspiration for the show, the show that I wanted to see and wanted to do, but then nobody had, I'd never seen it. Nobody else was doing it. So then I started doing that, and then the persona and the look that, that I, you know, this, that I had built for the show, uh, my live Gothic Illusion show, Sure. that then got me invited to act in horror films. So then it goes kind of like full circle for me then, because then I had a chance to go in and act in horror films, which was part of the inspiration to take the show in that direction in the first place, into in, into a, you know into the, the dark side. Right. And but it's fun. It's also very funny too, because I've got a, a lot of you know there's a lot of humor in it as well, as there are with a, a lot of other people. Like we were talking about Voltaire earlier, and yes, and he's got a, a great sense of humor about it all too. But he's also very serious about you know the the the, the gothic aesthetic and everything. So. And uh, this is very much, it's the same kind of way. But it was interesting that then the persona got me invited into horror films. So for the last 20 years, I've been uh, acting in horror films. You know, and even the, even the first one was, uh, was really interesting to do. It was written and directed by a friend of mine, Dan Clark, who we had done cable with, uh, you know, Dan and I years before that. Um, but it actually, uh, it's a, a movie called The Item, and it went to Sundance in 99. And then oh, got a wow. worldwide release on video after that. So it was, it, it was a pretty mind-blowing experience, like the first time you're in a movie and on a movie set, and I loved it that much. And then it goes to Sundance, and I'm like, damn, you know? Sure. And at that point, I was just like, uh, you know, uh, I, I, was, I was just in. Because the same audience that would come and see my Dark Illusion show is the same audience that would come and see me in a horror film. Right. You know, and then I've been a bunch of different things since then. And so that, and that's that's kind of how I became the master of the dark realm. <laughs> you know, it's a long journey to get there. Sure, you know? I mean, that's, and we're going to talk about that journey as yeah. well. Uh, we were talking on the ride here a little bit, and you were telling me mm -hmm. you started pulling rabbits out of hats in your early magic career, and you started off as a kid with a magic kit. Yeah. You want to talk about your origin story a little bit before we move into the sure. who we're now with and the master of the dark realm? How do you, how did you get your start in the magic and illusions? Well, there was a radioactive spider, and I was bitten. No, I'm just kidding. That's Spider-Man. Sorry. You said origin <laughs> Spider -Man, story. That I, was, had uh, I had to go there. My there. parents got shot in alley. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> we were leaving a movie. And now I dress up like a <laughs> magic My Batman. <laughs> Um, I got a, I, I, like so many of us did, and I've talked to people all the time and they had this, this same kind of experience, but didn't stick with it then, uh, as I got, I got a box, a, a box of magic, a, a, a magic kit as a gift when I was eight years old. And that, who knew that all this dark, sticky fun was in that box? I had no idea at the time what I was in for. Sure. Uh, but I loved it, and I and I leaned into it, and I was doing that, and I was, you know, I was doing all kinds of things, and I mean, and very early on, I was I was performing for family and friends, and then at school and things like that, right. and in fact, I was even, you know, I almost hate to use the term because it it's almost overused now, it's but. I, I was entrepreneurial at the time. I made a set in the garage of giant playing cards and set up my show out there and drew out and printed out my own tickets and sold them to classmates. And they came I, and I sold them tickets and I did shows in my garage as my theater. So uh, you so were I, hustling magic I was, even I was back a hustling the mofo even then. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. I was pimping myself out. That's that's absolutely amazing. It's it's crazy. It's it's crazy fun. I gotta I've gotta find those old. There's old pictures of me, you know, in the garage with that set up there and the giant cars behind me and, and you know and bad formal wear and stuff. But even then, you know, it was like there was the that inkling of what was to come because I thought even then it's like you know the the, the typical classic 
magician, that look right. of a black tuxedo and the uh, the black cape with the red lining and sure. everything. And even then, I thought to myself, that dude looks like Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he does. Right. That that look does. But nobody else really followed that. And so many so many people have, have you know people come up to me all the time and go, you know what? I had a magic kit when I was a kid and blah blah blah. And you know, and they and they played with it for a while and then they went away. And, there's, and the, but for some of us, there's a that are out there that that liked it for some reason I found and I didn't have this language at the time but I do now I mean for some reason I found the performance of magic uh to be a a a valid vehicle of expression okay you know because I uh, that's I later in in college studied um theater and communications and I studied acting in theater and I I studied it you know basically for the stage show to make the stage show better and and it did uh, but I had no idea I was going to actually use that, the acting training, as an actor later. Sure. Because that just wasn't my focus at the time. It, it, it came along later when they came to me and said, we love your look and we love what you're doing. We love your persona. Would you like to be in my horror film? And I was like, yes. Yes, I would. And that's what got me started there. So, But it all goes back to that, that box of magic, you know, and what started there. And the, the inkling, because magic, I think, inherently has... If you if you scratch off that happy dancing veneer that it has so many times, yeah, it it's dark. It's just it's better dark. I mean, look at Harry Potter and all that stuff. I mean, sure. it's fun because there's the the dark side to right. it, and that and even the whole thing that dark mystery of it all. Right, and that's what appeals to people. That story, you know, set in that world of dark mystery and magic. And that's, you know, and I just take it a little further. It's more provocative. It, it, I make right. dark, sticky fun. Right. You know, so it's provocative and it's funny and it's, and it's, it's but some of it's dark. So, and even in, on stage, like I say, I, I, I use the theatrics of it and everything to kind of, you know, go in and out. It's, it's funny when I'm, you know, playing with the audience, talking to the audience, and then I go back and do, uh, and do the actual performances, which are generally, you know, darker and, and more, uh, almost a vignette of kind of, you know, uh, some dark theme. That's very interesting. I uh, So I was talking to the Queen of the night before the show, yeah. and I was like, oh, you know, I got to talk to Ron on the drive here, and I was like, I got to listen to a little bit of you go from pulling rabbits out of a hat to decapitated heads. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the transition between, I'm going to call it traditional magic, excuse me. If no, I, that's fine. Yeah. That's, so that, from that's traditional right. magic mm -hmm. to... Where you're at now, can you talk a little bit about your transition into yeah. the dark versus the the dark, but the traditional version of it? That where I went, where yeah. I kind of turned. Yeah, well, I got to, I just got to a point where I, you know, I had personally advanced so much more. I was basically regurgitating what I had been taught, which is interesting here and now, and, and which and I, I want to bring this point up. My uh, original mentor, my my first magic teacher, was named Bob Anderson. That so, is the wildest that, thing. It, that's what I thought. I was like, man, because when I met you, it was Bob After Dark, and I knew all that and stuff. But then it was later that I noticed your last name, and I was like, damn, that's the same, you know. <laughs> and so it's Robert Anderson. He worked under the name of the Great Andersini. That's you know? amazing. And it was but Bob Anderson. Yeah. That yeah, just blew me away. You guys want to talk like, about e We've got to talk about this. If you guys tonight. want to talk about idiosyncrasies yeah. and how weird things work <laughs> out correctly, that right there is an idi idiosyncrasy and a very much like strange there are no coincidence. coincidences, you There's know? no such thing as a yeah. coincidence, especially in the world that I hang out in, that's the paranormal and the occult. Oh, yeah. So you train you you start All a pull energy mingles. You ain't kidding. So you pull yeah. you pull rabbits off the head and then you start pulling you know these decapitated. It, well, well, yeah, it, not it, literally. It, he's not killing anybody. I, I don't think he is. <laughs> not that anyone knows of. No, <laughs> no. So, tell me a little bit about. I know where you're at now. You are the master of, of the, the dark, dark realm. realm. Yes, and you're performing under the go the classic gothic attire and everything. How mm -hmm. does that? Do you? How does that? differ i guess from traditional magic like well, i other than the obvious well it's like what i was talking about it's like under that veneer of that you know happy dancing where you know like you say you take your typical illusion show you know 
and and the you know the lovely ladies that are out there, their companions that are that are helping the the co performers sure. actually in the show, um, who are doing most of the work and when they're crawling in those boxes and things. So they're out there and they're happy and dancing and smiling and jumping in a box and then getting mutilated for your entertainment pleasure. And but it's all happy and smiles and colors and stuff like that. And I'm just like, well, let's peel away that very fake veneer of that that's just meant to make it appeal to a larger mainstream audience and let's lean into what's really going on down in there because i mean it is a lot darker and it even even touches on fetishism and even bdsm in the fact that you know you are locking someone in a in a container in a box in a confined area, and then you are you know Skewing. looking like you are chopping off their head, stealing, stabbing them with swords, cutting them with blades. I mean, and that that there that is dark. When you at its core, that is a dark thing. You are you are dismembering somebody for the entertainment pleasure of many, and then you know sometimes you're putting them back together. Sometimes you know when I do the cremation illusion at the end of my show. Bang! She, it's like it's presented as kind of a witch burning, and she goes into the cremation, and I light the coffin on fire. She kicks and screams in the flames. We close the box, we spin it around, and then we open it up, and there's nothing left but a smoldering skeleton. You have to see it. It's a great time. Yes, fun for the kids. Fun, um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and but it's like I don't bring her back. I don't restore her. That's the end of the show. <laughs> Bang! Um, Good night, everybody. Yeah. And then Ron is officially looking for a new, a new. Partner, and so then, and then there's yeah, then there's another ad on Craigslist where another. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where have you performed in your career? We talked a little bit, and one of which I've actually been to, but I'm not going to talk about that. It's a different story. But yeah, I want to hear about your career because you've done some amazing things in the world of magic. I've taken magic really where other magicians fear to tread, where, where most of them couldn't take it with a traditional show. They just wasn't going to be able to go. But, I mean, I, I, I performed everywhere from, you know, the Magic Castle, the famed Magic Castle in Hollywood. Oh, that's... And that's that you've been there. That, I, I yeah, we, yeah. We've, we've been... It's a great place. I recommend if you're out there, I recommend anyone to go check it out. I know about the haunted piano, Gertrude. Yes, yes, yep. and that's where my line of work kind of steps in. And you need a secret like... word to get in, and the bookshelf moves, and you know you gain entrance. And it's it's cool and it's fun. Everyone should go at least once. I've been many times, but I've performed there. Sure. Uh, you know, and it's been many many years ago now. And it was it, it, even that was a weird experience. Um, you know, uh, it, it took me three and a half years to book the damn thing. Uh, because I was out here and I was doing something very different than what they're usually booking. Sure, they're they're more of the traditional. They are way more leaning, far more into traditional uh, types of magic and, and that kind of performance. And they've got several spaces. They've got a close-up space. They've got you know a stand-up space. You know the parlor, and they've got a main stage. So you can see a variety of different things there. But it's all more based in more traditional. You know, old school kind. And there of is magic. nothing wrong with that, by the way. I just nothing want to point wrong with it. If anybody wants to do that, that's fine. I just my you know, two seconds into another damn card trick, my eyes glaze over. I just so I, what I, Ron's I, telling everybody is to get into traditional magic and don't go into goth magic, because Ron will hunt you down. Uh, there's a few. There's a few others. I mean, if you enjoy the darkness, <laughs> that's where picking, you're going to go. Just picking on you a little. Yeah, just no, picking. that's fine. That's fine. But you know. Um, yeah, so it, so, and that was fun, but it was interesting, though, because I even had other magicians thanking me for performing at the castle and doing something different, you know? Everybody was, you know, I was doing my, my Vampire's Kiss Illusion, which is like a 12-inch long surgical-grade stainless steel needle that goes into the neck of my assistant and wiggles around, and it bleeds and everything, and, and I pull it out, and it looks like a vampire bite with thus the Vampire's Kiss, and everyone was like, you got to go see the guy upstairs, you know, uh, who's sticking needles in girls, you know? They're That's like, that horrifying. Guy, uh, it's it's aw- great. It's awesome. You can, yeah. Watch Dark Realm. You'll see a very provocative version of it in there. Hey, Count, I think we got a side gig for you. I, I, think, that's a, I think that's a good idea as well. I got to say, I saw uh, Ron at Wickedly Whiting there. It was a great show. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's funny because, you know, the wind was really, Bob was out there. That wind was something that The wind day. was ridiculous it was that brutal f- that it, was show. Bru- yeah, it was brutally cold last <laughs> night that night and it was it was very windy does doing outside magic uh different than doing inside like you have to work against the elements is that difficult for you or not yeah but i spent like five six years working in theme parks so i was used to being outside just not in the damn cold yeah 
So that's <laughs> what makes it a challenge is when, when you're doing a show and it happens. I mean, and it was fairly early October, mid-October, yeah. but it had just gotten cold really soon. But I had done, I, I, I done things like very far north, like Eau Claire, Wisconsin and stuff, and it's already cold in October. Sure. And it was just, I would say four out of the five weekends we were up there, it was brutally cold doing those shows but you're still doing it and with that for being a performer. i'm undead i'm still here i'm ancient i'm immortal i have the blood of kings and celtic warriors in my veins mostly because i drank it but that's besides the point <laughs> so count you know when you know when bob after dark when i'm out traveling and i don't i can't be here for a live show maybe we could get you a side gig hanging out with ron are you looking for some new talent to poke with a needle <laughs> oh, well usually i you know who would be a more? You know, it's very possible. Who's more pokeable, me or Bob? We were going more back. Of, wow! Now we're being really provocative. Well, no, I mean, what, the what's a, okay, <laughs> who's gonna make? Who's gonna make the better assistant, me or uh, Count Panico? We were going back and forth on who was gonna get sawed in half. This I week. don't know. I'm gonna have to see in some pasties and a thong and a wig. I'm, then I'll I'll be the judge. I think Bob's got that on lockdown right there. Thanks, Bob's got thanks, that. Thanks, Count. <laughs> We appreciate. I appreciate your uh, support very, very much. I, you know what? We're just getting your name out there, Bob. I, I Bob, after dark, um, you get sawed in half by Ron Fitzgerald. Absolutely, or we cut off the crossover. Head, we didn't know what was happening. Absolutely, Blow, cremate me. I think. I think this might be a future uh, crossover episode, guys. Yeah, next, Ron came on my show. Now I have to go on his. Now you got to go. His is a little the, bit yeah, more of a exactly. painful endeavor. Than my than him coming it on is, my show. as we <laughs> torture Bob for the entertainment pleasure of many. Yes. Oh boy, I might how have long to would that be? That's going to have to happen. I think I think Panicle already signed me up over there, right, Count? I think so too. Well, you, and I got to say, uh, when you go to one of these shows, great soundtrack as well. You, Thank you're you. getting into the music. Do you choose the music or? Uh, yes, I I curate very heavily all the music and you know keeping the audience in mind and and what I like. And and thank you. I I always get really high marks from from the, from everybody who sees the show and the audience in general. Everybody loves the music, so thank you. I'm glad you mentioned that because it is. It's it's really good music. It's 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 perfect for a dark, you know, uh, gothic show like that. And you, but it's still fun. And, uh, and you time it perfectly. And, the tricks are timed perfectly to the music too. Like you time the tricks perfectly yeah. to those music. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, that's the thing. I as I as I put the acts together. I always want to find the, the, the perfect piece of music that just kind of amplifies what I'm doing with it, you know, and I want to, I'm, I'm trying to, at the end of the day, it's, it's magic, I think, is best when it's a piece of theater, a piece of performance art, and, and I want the music to reflect that, and I want that, that to help communicate what I'm trying to put out to the audience with that. So, so thank you, because I, 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 take, I take great care and great pride in putting some good, a good soundtrack to the show. Bob, I know this might be difficult. I'm gonna turn the speakers up. I know your cans we have are. a caller. Yeah, but I, I'm gonna turn the speakers. I'm speaker gonna do up the best I can, caller. I promise. We're dealing with a little technical difficulties with internal audio. Internal audio. You guys can hear me okay, but I can't hardly hear anything else going on. You got John yeah. on the line. Who is it? Hi, John. You're on the air. One moment, John. We're still dealing with uh, technical stuff here. Ground control to Major Tom. Something like yeah. that. Uh, hey, John, can you hear me okay? Could hear you good and well, Bob. How you doing? Oh, we're doing great, John. Uh, how are you this evening? Pretty good. How are you doing, Ron? I am good. How are you? John you, is actually pretty, the pretty creator good. of Count Panic in the legitimate sense. Rock and out. John calls on every week's episode, so he holds that record of only missing like two since I've been live. So he calls in every week. It's nice to have you on, John. Yeah, hey, Ron. Uh, so you're... Uh, kind of a unique uh, magician there. So when people come to see your performances, do they have some sort of idea um, what they're going to see other than, you know, pulling a rabbit out of a hat? Uh, John was asking, do they have an idea of kind of what they're getting into? Oh, yeah, I think most people do. I mean, you know, you get one look at me and go, this this is not going to be your grandma's magic show, you know? It's like <laughs> I think I think the the mismatched eyes and the shaved head and the eyeliner kind of kind of clues him into the fact that you know uh, I'm not David Copperfield and I'm not uh, I'm not going to be doing anything you know they're going to have a good time but but it's not it's going to be a weird dark ride yeah well that's something uh, something different um, does your type of mag- uh, magical uh, stuff have anything related to the paranormal or 
you know. Oh, uh, very much so. I've been on I've been on a lot of ghost hunts and. We're going to get to that in a yeah. little bit. John always has the best way of asking questions. Before. He's like psychic. Yeah. He always knows what I'm about to start talking. Where you're about to We're go. On, John's yeah. amazing like that. He knows what I'm thinking that's at all perfect. times. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I, 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 I've explored a lot of this culture, and I, and I really enjoy it. And that, uh, that's because I just like being there, and, and that's why it is part of the inspiration for the show itself is, um, you know, dark culture, which to me is it's more of an umbrella term, which means everything from the goth industrial subculture to, you know, horror and dark sci-fi and the paranormal and the occult and even getting into, like, like burlesque and fetish and BDSM, sure. all of those influences and, and, and all of those. And there's a lot of, of fringe you know, uh, you know, communities in dark culture, and, and they they all the vampire community, you know, as well, and then they all kind of uh, cross over yes. or touch each other at, at some point. So, uh, just dark culture in general kind of fascinates me. All of it sounds interesting. So, I imagine at the end of the show, you'll give some information on your website and stuff like that. Yeah, FitzgeraldRealm.com. dot com. Sign up on my email list. You'll get uh, a free musical track of Dark and Sticky Sweet from uh, the Dark Realm movie soundtrack. Which we're very and excited to talk about. Yeah, we'll bro. talk about that soon, too. Thank you so much, John, for calling in. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank See you. Ya. Have a good night, John. Again, Thanks, guys, John. if you're trying to call in tonight, 219-845-1100. We're experiencing just a little minor technical difficulties with the hearing of the audio. Uh, you guys so scream into your phone. Scream as saying. loud as scream you can. Into your phone. Or if, you're gonna, if you're a breather, breathe really, really loud for <laughs> us. That's what we're looking for. So <laughs> Bob, Bob After Dark, in essence, is a paranormal show. We talk about things that yes. go bump in the night and whatnot. Absolutely. And that's what I wanted to talk to you next about. Yeah. Because I've had Joe Diamond on the show before. I know you know who mm -hmm. Joe is. And Joe yeah. came on here and blew my mind with his mentalist stuff. Like, oh, legitimately, yeah, like, I... He, he was on the phone, and it was me and my two co-hosts and Count Panic, and we were going back and forth for a few, and he was able to just blow my mind. Mm -hmm. And he has he talks a little bit about the spiritual realm, but you are, like, neck deep into the occult with your act. You, yes. like, basically, you take the idea of the paranormal, the occult, and the horror, mm -hmm. and the dark, and you just, you're neck deep. I lean into it very heavily, yeah, because that, that is the inspiration for the show. It's like... It's interesting. Uh, uh, over 100 years ago, or right around, right around 100 years ago is now, at the turn of the last century, around 1900, there was, I mean, it was, mass media was nothing but newspapers, and if you wanted to see entertainment, you went out to see it live, you know? It, movies were in its, their infancy and everything. I mean, they weren't even, there wasn't even sound yet. Uh, so uh, that was what they called the golden age of magic. You had huge touring illusion shows then. And it was interesting because even during that time, they all leaned more heavily into the occult then. All of the magic posters at the time. The, and now the guys didn't look like me. They they were all they they all look like that vampire version. Sure. They were they all look like traditional magic. But it was all, but it was all kind of formal black tuxedo and sometimes a cape and things like that. And I'm assuming that probably ties into the spiritualism movement. Well, that was it, going it big. does. Oh, it, it does, and I can talk about that because Houdini's yeah. the guy to talk about in terms of the right. the spiritual, spiritualism movement of the time. But but in the golden age of magic, it was interesting because Thurston Keller and all these guys, the big illusionists at the time, the, and and all of their magic posters, they had these little red imps and devils and and things on their on their shoulders like they're whispering the dark secrets of the occult in in the magician's ear and that fascinates the hell out of me you know that they did that and and that was that was pop culture and sure at the time you know so uh, i i leaned into that and there's there's been some other performers uh, you know in the modern era um richiardi is uh, you know um, uh, um, an illusionist and he's he's passed now but he was an illusionist that leaned heavily into that. And then there is uh, Tony Andrusi, and, and, and um, it was based out of Chicago. And then uh, Max Maven, mm -hmm. who very famously, a lot of people know Max Maven. He's been all over television for years. And, and Max has always done a very, you know, a very dry humor and, and a very kind of gothic look. Right. You know, and done a lot of mentalism. And so there are more modern examples of that. Uh, uh, but I, I always found it interesting. And like I say, you know, when you peel away that, that happy veneer of magic, there's all this stuff underneath to unpack. Right. And that was interesting to me to explore that, you know. And 
And so, yeah, yes, and that, and it does. And even if you watch my movie Dark Realm, which is you can watch, uh, we're going to talk Amazon about that next. Prime. And then even that, even the movie has an occult theme to it. it. It's like it's like magic with a K next to magic, with just a C. you know, illusion magic, right. it's theatrical magic next to, I guess, energetic or occult magic. Sure. And and they're both in there next to each other. It's my live illusion show that you get to see shot in front of a live audience. Yeah. Um. And that is then mixed with a, a horror film narrative, a, horror, a provocative horror story um, that they, they intermingle quite a bit. And, and, but it's, it's, it's interesting, and it, it kind of mirrors my own fascination with that. That's know? great. And, and that does. So it, it all goes back into the paranormal and everything. Like I said, I've been on ghost hunts and things like that. And I've even seen things, you know, and I know how stuff is done. And, but I've, you know, a few things seen and had things happen that, just, you know, you know there's something otherworldly or, or extraworldly, something else going on behind yeah. it. I mean, it, it is, it is, you know, whether you want to call it spiritual or energy or, or, or just a cult, however you would want to label that. But I've been there. I mean, I had an experience where... Can we talk about it? Uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I to go Notice yeah. me, guys. I'm glued to yeah. him. He's leading the show. I, it, could be Ron, <laughs> it could be Ron after dark for what I care at the moment. This is great. I want to hear about Ron's uh, paranormal yeah. experience. This is everything I've ever wanted. Look at this guy. Look this... how he's dressed. I want to hear it. Well, you know, I know, but that's the thing. You know, I've been there. It's like, you know, people assume I go home and I take all this off. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not always wearing it. this jacket and, and the, you know, but I, but I mean, this is me. It's just me more amped up for the sure, stage you're, and for the camera. Sure, you're personified at that moment. Yes. But you just, yeah. You don't turn it off. No. I mean, I'm the same. I, I lived it. I don't, you know, the my eyeliner's already on. I, I live, this right. is who I am. Uh, you know, so when I say I really lean into what I, what I was interested in, I, I mean, I really mean that. Yeah. And, I, and that goes along with having some experiences. And, and, and this one is, you know, this is, uh, you know, 20 years ago, maybe a little longer. And I was not well. And I was, you know, there was a lot of medical treatments at sure. the time. But I was, I was laying in bed, my girlfriend next to me. And it was late. I wasn't on any sort of medication or anything like that that would cause you to hallucinate and and you'll you'll think about that sure Th that'll come up when i tell you what i what i saw and i'm just laying there in bed and then up above me at the end of the bed was this uh hooded figure floating just you know parallel to me laying in the bed laying there outstretched arms the hood goes up and it's a skeletal face skeletal hands and it, it's out like that, and it's just floating there at the end of the bed. That's really strange. Uh, it, it, it's very spooky. It's very scary. It's way strange. And I was kind of fascinated, and I'm just like, you know, and it just, and, and it just felt like it's one of those moments that you know it wasn't that long, but it just felt like hours or, you know, just a lot longer than, than, than it was uh, probably. And it's just outstretched, and it's just, it's just floating there. It's just laying there. And, of course, it looks like, you know, what we think it looks like, the Grim Reaper, you know, or yeah. something, some Reaper-esque entity, and it's just floating there, and it's just floating there, and it's just, you know, and then the, the, it's trailing off, and you just do the rest of it's flapping in the wind behind it, and and that was one thing, and I was just kind of more fascinated by anything, and I'm like, what the <laughs> what hell is, is going on? <laughs> and you're just kind of laying there like, all right, and then it starts to float up towards me, like above me, you know? Like it's coming up to meet me face to face. And as it gets towards me, I mean, you are, you are really, you know, I mean, you're terrified, but your fight or flight kicks in. And I took a swing at the damn thing. Really? Oh, yeah. I swung at it. <laughs> I swung at it so hard, it rolled me out of bed and woke up my girlfriend. And then it was gone. It was all over. That was it. And that was... That's probably my my biggest and most visceral experience with something paranormal, something occult. That this entity, whatever it was, it was it was there and it was floating and it and it, and it looked like it was you know was coming after me. And I took a swing at it and sent it packing. That's you know? great. I this is it's a weird. I, I'm going to pretend this is a Bob After Dark exclusive story. Uh, I'm I, sure you probably shared that. Other I, places. I, I, you, very rarely. I, I, it's on. You know, it, it it doesn't always come up. Everybody's. 
we get so you know to talking about show business and, and other sure. you know other parts of dark culture and things but when we're on a show where we do you know cover the you know the paranormal stuff i do bust out the story now and then and and it and it's fascinating to me and i like telling the story because it, uh, oh, it's weird because now the sounds kicking. Sticks in the sounds headphones. back. You guys call yeah. in two one nine eight four five one. Yeah, we can hear you now. We can hear you now. You can breathe through us more subtly now. Thank you. Yeah, so. <laughs> up or down. A little down. If a little that's down. Okay. A little down. Just a hair. But no, so. that's that's amazing. Um, maybe the yeah. story was the one that brought the the sound back. But I have um I've heard of a lot of people having, and I don't want to touch too much on your a health issues, or something but, like that. Yeah. What I like to call, well, not what I like to call, but what the community calls a near-death experience. Yeah. It sounds to me like you were visited by something, and you were like, not Clearly. today. Yeah. Have, Ooh, yeah, you know, exa- that's how I felt. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you know, yeah. So, do you ever think about that, like, even to this day? Like, what was it, and do you have a theory of what it was? Uh, my only theory is, I mean, is it, it, it is what it looked like that it that it was like sure. you know the Reaper coming to get you, and I was not having it. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, I need to survive. I'm still here. It. Yeah, twenty years from now, I'm going to be on a radio show in Hammond, Indiana, slash podcast called Bob After Dark. Not today. I'm not going yeah. today. <laughs> right. That's well, I, I, I had a lot of stuff to do. You know. Sure. Yeah. I had stuff to do. I have... hours to go before I rest. Yeah. So. Somebody chimed in on the chat, and you don't have to have a conversation about this, but somebody wants to know your opinion of people like James Randi, Banachek, and other skeptics in the magic business. Well, there are a lot of skeptics. I think it's it's, it's almost become their business, and this can get us back around to Houdini. Yeah, that's... It's almost became a tradition after that. I mean, and Randi's very much in the tradition of Houdini and and, and others, that, you know, Houdini, um, when his mother passed, because they were very tight, they had a very tight relationship, and he loved her very much. When she passed, he started going to psychic mediums because he wanted to make contact with her. He believed he was looking for the real thing. Right. And when he kept finding fakes, he got pissed off and started to go around and bust them. And that later became part of his stage show. He had three parts to his stage show. One was straight up magic, one was the escapes, and then the then the third and final part was exposing the fake medium methods and everything like that. Sure. Which was almost really a, 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 a magic expose almost. Sure. Which which gets you into kind of like Penn and Teller territory there. Right. A little bit. Um, which is why I love them so much because they're just they're they're Different. the best thing in magic yeah. today. I, honestly, Bob, wow, that's a that's yeah. a good compliment. Penn and Teller, if you guys are listening to this right now, I've been they're told I look they're like freaking Penn. awesome. I've yeah. been told I look like Penn. You I, do, do, a bit. do I do I do? Yeah. I so yeah. Penn and yeah. Teller, yeah. if you guys are listening, you guys, I have two seats. Teller doesn't even need to talk. Oh no, <laughs> he talk, he does talk, and he will talk in an interview. Oh yeah, he does speak. He does. Talk. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Okay, so no, no, I've actually, I've actually gotten, I've, I've met him a couple of times, and and I've actually, gotten I'm sure him. the magic yeah. world is probably a very like guys probably all know each other, probably talk to each yeah, other a lot. I mean, there's circles, and I've met a lot of people, and there's you know, uh, but not everybody, you know. So uh, it all depends on whose paths cross. But anyway, so that's going back to the medium stuff. Yeah, that and that's and then and then he was known for years for busting fake mediums. But the thing that everybody glosses over, especially the skeptics, is the fact that he was actually looking for the real thing. Yeah. And that's what fascinates me in that story, too. Not that, I mean, we all know there's fakes, and you can always tell. Oh, sure. And, and I know when I look at somebody, when they're doing cold readings and stuff like that, that they're just BSing people, you know? There's times, um, yeah. And if it's presented as entertainment, fine. That's one thing. The minute you're trying to sell it to them as the real thing, and you're bilking people out of large amounts of money selling it to them as the real thing, that's when there's an issue. Sure. I mean, and that's when legalities come up and everything else. That's, that's fraud. That's not entertainment anymore. That's just fraud. And it's cruel to people who are actually looking for the real thing. So Houdini was looking for the real thing. And then, in fact, when, when, when he died on Halloween in 1926. I did not know Houdini yes. died on Halloween. He died That's, on Halloween. I guess if there's a better. That dude's got the greatest, like, you <laughs> know, and death cred story. and magic even to this day, you know. It's like, I, that's probably <laughs> the best day to go in our line of work. I'm busy that day, so <laughs> man, no, 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 I'm thinking maybe on, the, on November 1st, day I'll of the day, the maybe, dead, yeah, there maybe, you go. yeah, I'm just going to regenerate like Doctor Who, and I'm just going to keep going, I'm just going to, you know, so <laughs> anyway, uh, and so, uh, but even after he passed on Halloween in 1926, his wife then, for years afterwards, on Halloween, did a seance, because he gave her a specific code word. So, and he said, this is how you'll know it's me. If, I, if you can reach me, this is how you'll know it's me. So they had a 
a special cold word between the two of them that nobody else knew. And she tried for like a, a decade or more after his passing to contact him. So he believed. I mean, that's the thing that everybody, all these skeptics and everybody, you know, and I think it's, I think it's good to have the skeptics. Oh, skeptics are very, very, very important yeah. to our line of work. It's just that a, a lot of people, you know, they they then completely dismiss uh, the, the the paranormal, the spiritual, and everything else. And that's the interesting thing in that whole conversation now is that, you know, because it's not scientific and it can't be proven, it can't be repeated, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But as our science gets better, the science and the mysticism are starting to cross paths again. Because years, I mean, when we started, you know, when humanity first, you know, started to be humanity, be human, you know, that's a good word for you guys, be humanity and, and, and have, you know, have culture and written history, et cetera, when we could pass things down. I mean, we passed things down orally for the longest time at first, and then we had language and the written language, and then we could go after that. And once we could print it, then we could spread things around. And now we got the internet. So a thing spread like wildfire. But, uh, the interesting thing is, is that a long time ago, um, you know, it's like religion and magic and science were all the same thing, you know? as we started and then they got split up into separate disciplines and now they're starting to cross paths again where you know they're looking for things like called the god molecule right things like that and they're not talking it in terms of even you know spirit or god or or, or you know or the universe even which is more new age they're talking about it in, for, in terms of the field of energy that it, it, it's it's an intelligent energy that runs this all you know, and then how that energy then interacts and how we have that you can, you know, Karelian photography, you can photograph the energy leaving our bodies. Right. And that your your heart has a, a magnetic field that extends feet outside of your of your body. Right. You know, and it has actually, you know, there, there's a lot of electrical activity in your mind, in your brain, but your heart has the biggest elect you know magnetic field mm. you know so when you start to talk about it the mysticism and the spiritualism in scientific terms people start to come back in and that gets into you know when you start talking right. about the field and all of this other stuff that gets into law of attraction and stuff like that and that gets very airy fairy to a lot of people sure. too but then that gets into energy and that also gets into then where that gets interesting is where it then crosses over and gets into the quantum Yes. And then quantum possibilities that, that in the field that all possibilities exist. And that and that's not and that's not just mysticism. That it, 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 it even though it sounds very much like mysticism on one level, that's quantum physics and quantum possibility. I mean, we're even on the verge well not on the verge, but on the verge of it becoming beer, but quantum computing. Yeah, where the, where, the, where the calculations are not done in that machine, they're done outside of that machine, and they're done, uh, you know, in, in, in an exponential way because all the possibilities and all those, all, those, all those calculations can be done, bang, in an instant. Yeah. And, you know, and that's what they're talking about with all of that. So all of this then starts to, you know, come back in where you can, you know, the, I think the thing where everybody dismisses the mystic or the paranormal, et cetera, is because it could not exactly be captured or measured, you know, in a scientific way. But it, it seems to me that we are getting to the point where those disciplines are crossing, coming back together, where you're going to be able to describe the paranormal and the mysticism in a scientific explanation, in, in a way that, that gets into the quantum sure. and actual scientific, scientific magic, repeatable really. scientific theory that, you know, which is, which goes back into, into science, which gives us a unified theory right. that, which is what Einstein was after. Yeah. You know, because everything is a microcosm. I mean, our cells are a microcosm of the way that the universe forms, right. the way it works and the way things rotate around another, the way gravity works, you know, um, but there's, there's other quantum possibilities as you get down into the cellular it's like they go down and then they, they, they thought you know it's atoms and you know it's particles protons neutrons electrons and then that you know when you look at it it's not so much particles as it is it is is it, it changes as it's as it's observed as well so it changes as it's observed and by whom it's observed by and then it changes from particles to energy huh it's crazy so it's, Ron it's here amazing. is pitching to me yeah. scientific magic basically 
Well, scientific mysticism and spirituality. That's amazing. Now, we got a little bit left in the show, and I wanted to talk to you about, I wanted to ask you two questions. Yeah. Well, three questions, I guess. The future of magic slash Ron Fitzgerald. Mm. As technology grows, yes. and as we grow as a society, where does the world of illusionism go? Right. And then I want to talk to you about your movie. So Dark Realm. Dark yes. Realm. So whatever order you want to talk about that stuff in, those are my two major bullet points I wanted to ask before we move on. Well, let's let's talk about Dark Realm because that's kind of where I am kind of currently, of and then we'll go beyond that. Yes. How's that? Sounds great. Good. Well, Dark Realm, like I said, it is, it, you know, if you've never seen my show, and for those of you out there far and wide, if you want to see a really great version of my show, um, watch Dark Realm. It's, it's got my live illusion performances in in the movie, and it, it is the first movie in horror or the world of, of magic that goes this far, you know, where it is a, it is, it, it blends genres of horror and live performance. So you've got live performance shot in front of a live audience of my Gothic Illusion show, which is probably 65% of the movie. And, but then is, that is then interwoven and even, you know, I mean, they, they blend at places. They overlap even um, where, with, with the stage uh, performance and the, the horror film narrative. It, it's a provocative horror story. So you get a horror story that plays itself out while you're watching the show because um, it's directed by Vincent Bellancio, who's also my co-star in the movie, along with Kaylee Williams and Lady India, Heather Dorff, uh, Cherry's Jubilee, and, and many others, um, and some other fabulous uh, actors and performers. Al Burke, and Al Burke's in The Wedding Singer mm-hmm. with Adam Sandler. Yes. He's the guy that stands up at the end and says, you can't talk to Billy Idol that way. Yes. And we, we kind of we, we mirror that. that, um, <laughs> that uh, we have a little fun with that in the movie in Dark Realm as well. Um, so it depends on if you know Al, but Al's, Al's an amazing actor and he's out in LA and he's got over a hundred IMDB credits. He's been in a ton of stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, so, so if you want to see a really interesting, very unusual horror film, it would be Dark Realm. If you can know? tell me the plot of it in like two, three sentences, what's the plot of Dark A Realm? master illusionist with a deadly secret. Okay. I mean, I'm playing a, 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 an illusionist, you know, it's very much inspired by myself. I don't, I don't. It's like in Purple Rain where they never refer to Prince as Prince, even though it's Prince. Yes. It's kind of the same way I'm doing this. Uh, where the, can people watch Dark Realm? Amazon Prime Video. If you have a Prime subscription, you can go on and watch it for free right now. It's part of your subscription. I'm going to point this out to the Queen of the Night because I know yeah. she's going to be very, very tempted to watch it without me. Absolutely not. You were going to wait for me because we're going to watch that together very soon in the next coming days. Um, watch it. And, and going, if you, and if you don't to. have Amazon Prime, you can watch it transactionally. It's like two bucks to watch it. So, And that's all through Amazon, though. That's, that's through Amazon right now. We've got it there. If you want the DVD, if you're a collector, if you want the DVD, you have to go to Dark Realm uh, or, or go to uh, FitzgeraldsRealm.com. And it's in my store on my website. Now that it popped up in my head right now, I want to talk about real quick this budding YouTube channel of yours, and this wonderful content you're putting on there. So can we talk about that for a minute real quick? Sure, yeah. I'm I'm building up the YouTube channel right now because I I found that so many industry people and, you know, uh, clients and fans alike were were going and and researching me there. And so largely I just, I hadn't been like building the channel so much as I was putting content up there that I was actually, you know, sending out links and and it was basically I was using it for business, you know, uh, but now I'm using it as more of a, you know, like this. I'm, I'm using it to actually put, put regular content out for people. And um, you can find a lot of my media appearances. I've been on national television, things like that. Those are on there. And uh, some of my just live performance is on there. And you can find a lot about, there's other, you know, behind the scenes content for, for Dark Realm. The Dark Realm movie yep. and stuff is on there. In fact, it also has its own soundtrack, which is something unheard of for a small indie film. It's got a soundtrack called Realm by House Made of Dawn, and that you can get that on Amazon too. Uh, and there's some of that. There's there's a clip of Dark and Sticky Sweet there. And mm-hmm. if you want a copy of Dark and Sticky Sweet, you can have in your own 
music library. Uh, you'll get that free when you sign up on my email list on my website, FitzgeraldRealm.com. So on, and, and the other thing I've been putting up on the channel on YouTube right yeah. now is I did a cable TV show in the early 90s called Fitzgerald Realm out of a place in Park Forest, Illinois, called Jones Inner Cable. And it was a, a local cable show that went through the all of the south suburbs of Chicago and, and into the Chicago itself. And it was so popular, people were even taping it. So long ago, it was on VHS, it was on tape. You guys hear that? Back before the war on terror, children. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it went out, and they were they were they were actually sending recording it and sending it to their friends out of state. So if I would have had the internet then, and this is before pre YouTube, sure. it was YouTube before there was YouTube. You had a, a gig at a local cable studio, is what you did. It's but basically now, what I'm doing now, guys. I want you to know I it's am, what everybody on YouTube is doing now because yes. uh, um, only not as many people had access. Now you can have access. You know, if you've got a webcam and a and a, and a you know can go online, then you you can have a YouTube channel. So I'm taking that uh, the old cable TV show and I'm reintroducing it. You know, and it, and it's sponsored by the Dark Realm movie, and I'm putting it up. The, uh, the old cable TV show. So if you go look at it and you go wa look at the playlist for uh, Fitzgerald Realm cult classic cable TV, it's on my YouTube channel. And that, uh, of course, uh, be prepared because I have long blonde hair uh, <laughs> back in the early 90s. It was before I regenerated into this form. It's a good form, though, right? I like this. this might might be I, I get a lot of really lovely ladies come and tell me they like this better. So. I think... I, I think I like that. I don't even mm -hmm. know you back then, but I like this version of Ron. It depends. There's a lot of ladies <laughs> and a lot of other men and women that yeah, like inclusions. dudes with yeah. like the long hair. Yeah. You know? I know. Why do you think but I keep it? <laughs> there you go. Exactly. And, and it's a good look. And, and I, you know, I'm a professional bohemian weirdo, so I was a long hair. And uh, I'm still kind of an honorary long hair, even though I shaved it all off. Okay. So this we, is just spookier, you I, know? I, and the spooky's so, good. That's what I do. Spooky's what we do, man. Okay. So I want to know, the last thing I want to talk to you about yeah. is the future of illusionism yeah. with the advances in technology. Yeah. And where is magic 10 years from now? Not magic with a K, magic with a C. With theatrical magic. Yes, yes. theatrical magic. Yeah. How is that going to change with the advancements of technology, YouTube, and video editing? Where where does this lie? Where where are, Where is your job in 10 years? That's Well, I think I'll still be doing it because when you get right down to it, magic, theatrical magic, I mean, we're putting it on, on online and on television, more traditional venues and on streaming services and, and YouTube and everywhere else you can see it. It's largely it's there so we can show you what we do no matter where, you, where you're at. But, but it's always our hope that you're going to come out and see it live because that's the real experience of it, is to see it with your own eyes in that audience. And, you know, there's a great energy exchange with the performer and the audience, and hopefully it's a good show and they've got some rock and music and some cool things to show you. And they're, they're fun to hang out with for a couple of hours on stage or however long they're out there. And, and and that's what it's really about. But, I mean, that is, you know, there's been a lot of what's just out-and-out out fakery of, of what's presented as theatrical magic on television when it's not. And there are performers. One of them is a big Las Vegas performer now, but he got into some trouble. I'm not going to say who it is. They'll know. They'll, They'll know. know. But they had they had their own kind of reality show for a while. And there was so much of that stuff that was so heavily edited and had uh, just so much that you it, – it, it, was, it, was, it was magic that you, was not theatrical in the nature where you could reproduce it in a live show. So when he then later went to do a live show in Las Vegas, he wound up – he was like doing a dove act and stuff like that that was not – congruent with what he'd been doing on television and it, it I think that's bad for all of us I think it's bad for the it, it, the theatrical magic sure. at, at large and and they're not the only one they're, they're the prime example because they were really out there uh, and still are um, and he used it to great effect he he used it to gather quite an audience and and make a heavily monetized career out of it so in that way it worked for him and you know I guess you can't argue with that my issue and I think the audience's issue with it honestly is that it's it's disingenuous it is not what you're presenting on television is not what you can do or what you do do live and that then 
to me. No, you're that, okay. Then, that, then, um, that then becomes an issue, I think. So, you know, when it goes forward and when you talk about that in technology, I, I, the only reason I bring that up is because that is a technological uh, thing. I mean, and, we, and we, they've all, all the big magicians, anybody, myself included, when you're on, on, um, on camera, on television, as you would when you're on a stage, you can still leave things out of, out of range, out of, out of sight of the audience. And that's, that's fair enough. That's still part of theatrical magic. It's, it's, when, it's, it's when it's actually just, you know, really just not, not genuine theatrical magic anymore. You know, you're not presenting it. And I realize everybody wants to push the envelope and everybody wants to go further and further and further. But when it's something different that you can't reproduce for your audience, if that is your aim then to then go out and do it. I mean, we all watch movies with amazing special effects in it now, but that's that's a movie and that's a story. That's not represented on television and other places as theatrical magic. Because even though I have some effects in Dark Realm, it's all in the in the side that, that's talking about the occult side of right. magic, magic with a K, everything you see me do in Dark Realm is exactly as you'd see it in, if you were watching it live. It is my stage show because I wanted to stay true to that in that project and in all my projects because I don't think it's fair to the audience to BS them and show them one thing and expect them to show up and see you live and you're feeding them something else. I don't think that's honest. That's, so, that's uh, that, and that gets into the technology. So, as we go further, where does it go? Because then you're in a world that is becoming increasingly more and more and more and more and more infused with and, and surrounded by technology. Right. And, and we are talking about doing a theatrical representation of magic and the occult, et cetera, you know, right. um, for a live audience. And I don't think, honestly, I don't think that's going to ever go away i think in some form or another i mean there is even ways there's there there are, are are illusions things that can be done with a phone can be done you know with a smartphone can be done with different ways but then you know and i've seen things done where uh they you know had a, a, a picture on, on an ipad and then they produced the thing from from the ipad and things like that the actual physical object and that and that's interesting too and that can be good visually um I think people, the minute the technology is involved, people automatically start to wander away from the theatrical sure. magic end of it and think it was accomplished in another way. And I mean, it's not like magicians haven't always used technology, too. The, the first, some of the first people to use in performance battery technology 100 years ago mm. and hidden, hidden forms of power, you know, batteries hidden in props and things like that, were magicians, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, and I'm not giving anything no, particularly away Debbie there. No, this is general manager. What was that? That was the news kicking in, but uh, our oh. lovely uh, WJOB staff is letting us go, so that's good. Yeah, you're good, Bob. You're good. Thanks. All right. Sorry, I got, I got. No, you're I got okay. Carried, no, 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 you're fine. I got carried into keep, that subject. Keep carrying. You're okay. good. Okay. All right. Well, and that, and that's why I find it fascinating. So, ten years from now, we're just going to have more and more technology. But there's also this awareness and all this thing that we were talking about on on the energetic and in, in, in the where 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 the the the, the spiritualism and, and energy and science are are coming back together in ways that are, are going to be able to explain some things that were before that not easily explained in a way scientifically that could be explained or replicated as you get into quantum mechanics and things like that uh, to talk about that. So, I mean, you know, so, so I'm fascinated by that as well. And that could have implications on, I mean, you know, if there's, you know, other ways and other things happening out there, then where does that put theatrical magic as, as entertainment out there? And it'll be interesting to see how that does. Basically, we're using a lot of our technology as, it's like the internet now is the delivery system for everything, you know? Yeah. It's disrupted every model, you know, especially in entertainment. First it was literature, and then it was music, and now it's, you know, heavily heavily changing the way we, we, we watch and consume television and movies. Right. You know? Um, and that's fascinating to me. And, you know, so basically I think technology is giving us new ways to access that. But then it, it will be very much then... Do you trust, can you trust, um, 
that person and you know what they're giving you that they say it's the it's theatrical illusion magic and what they're giving to you can you then trust them that that is not heavily edited or or cheated or faked in another right. way that you know if you were standing there in front of them would you be seeing the same thing and that that and that becomes a case by case issue i think you know i think that 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 doesn't doesn't you know fundamentally change you know what theatrical illusion is I, I also think there'll be more applications of how then we could use technology, whether it's Bluetooth or, you know, even giant screens on stage and stuff like sure. that. So you can, you know, I mean, because there's ways to use technology where you can, you know, have big flat screens on stage and be able to go up and do the, you know, a bit of uh, close up magic with somebody from the audience that then everybody can see. You know, like they've been done in concerts for a long right. time, but now you could you can you could use more of that kind of technology in shows like that. And I've been seeing more and more of that where there's there's monitors, you know, television monitors involved. So some of it will aid, you know, in the way. So it's neither friend nor foe. It's just I, I think it goes on. I mean, everybody was always worried about exposure. You know, there's been the mass magician. There's been exposure in in magazines and in print before and things like that. Popular mechanics did an exposure of magic you know, decades ago, and everybody thought, oh, well, this is going to be it. That's the end of, of theatrical magic because it's been exposed. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the method is way less interesting than the person doing it or why they're doing it or how they're presenting it. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you, what you are presenting is uh, a story and uh, a theatrical representation of something, it's theater, it's performance art. And that's when I think it's most interesting anyway. And if you're saying something or using it as any artist is to use their medium to say something, to express something, um, or even just to make people laugh, just to amuse them. If you're doing that, then you're doing what you set out to do. You know, and at that point, you know, uh, it, it gets back into, uh, you know, uh, did you consider yourself a purist or not on what you consider illusion to be and how much you will allow technology, editing, et cetera, to become a part of that? Sure. And at that part, does that become a, a future trend in theatrical magic? Which at that point, you know, you're just making another Avengers movie, you know, or something like. You're using CGI. Yeah. You know, you're using other means to do that. And at that point, you know, if you claim to be that, that's what you do live. It 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 either morphs into something else, or you're doing something disingenuous. But um, I think it's kind of fraudulent, you know, to call it to present it as, you know, uh, something that is traditionally uh, theatrical illusion. If you are if you are then augmenting it, if you are changing it from what you would see live, if you're integrating the technology into what you would see live, that's one way. That's one thing to do, and I think that's still that's still uh, pretty honest yeah. because it's just another method to accomplish something for the audience. But if you are fundamentally changing what they would then see live, that's more BS. To sure, me. that's just a lot of garbage. I think. You know, uh, somebody chimed in just a little bit ago. I'll ask this last question. and We're going to let panic ask you anything else that might be on panic's mind. Yeah. If somebody wants to break into the magic world now in 2020, how yeah. would they go about it now versus when you started? Well, it's different now. I mean, when I started, there were still brick and mortar magic shops where you could go and hang out with people and talk and magic geek out and see demonstrations live of effects that you might want to then purchase and and perform for other people so uh and that's different because it, it was a hard business in the first place and a lot of those brick and mortar a lot of those places are gone and and uh and and you're buying magic online now which is great it's super convenient but you're not getting anyone showing you the ropes on how to really make that work. So you're going to want, I mean, there's the International Brotherhood of Magicians. There is the Society of American Magicians and some others out there. Those are two of the big ones. And, you know, you can join uh, magic clubs, magic associations. Even their membership is, is down from what I understand, from what it used to be. So uh, finding a mentor maybe and then going out and just, devouring as much content as you can, watch it a lot, you know, enjoy it, find out, you know, and then 
and then start to work on your performance. And then, and then to, to go further beyond that is once you have a basic, you know, performance skills, you know, and I would recommend uh, theater or acting lessons to anyone because there are a lot of people that want to jump in and do things that are, are good at magic but they suck as entertainers. Yeah. And it's true. And that's why magic has a bad reputation as, as hacky in some circles because some of those people presenting something know how to do an effect, but they don't know how to entertain you with it necessarily. You know? And that's, that's where, you know, you want to you wanna improve your performance skills all over. And then find yourself uh, somewhere where you can niche in and whatever interests you infuse your show with that so you have an actual passion and something that sets you aside from the sea of other people that especially if you want to do it professionally but even if you're not you know have have a a, a take on it an, an angle on magic where you can bring something new something of yourself to it mm-hmm. yeah that's great Pan, um, did you fall asleep over there that's getting, all, very, that's getting very magic geek. That's I like it though. Geek. No, but oh. no. Panic's been <laughs> quiet. Panic. I'll usually bounce back and forth between panic. When oh no, that him that in. kind of talk will anesthetize great numbers of people. And, and, and yeah, no, yeah. I, I was enjoying it. Well, I'm sure good. Thank you. I'm thank sure. You. There, I'm sure. Right now, the queen of the night is geeking out over the fact that you gave a talk like that because she's super into talks like that. Cool. I and, and Ron, it. I know you can't see the comments, but people are uh, they're loving the show, and uh, I good. think you turned some uh, fans on tonight. I think good. people are. Thank people are going to check you out now. Thank you, guys. Yeah, please do. Check out Dark Realm and, and go find me on Facebook and, 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 uh, and uh, YouTube. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel, please, and go see Ron the Ron uh, wants the silver, pl- the silver playback. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need 100, uh, 100,000. I need 100,000 of you to go subscribe to my YouTube channel tonight. So <laughs> call your friends, wake up your mom, and get her. Lucky her. for you, we got a couple hundred thousand listeners. So, they see, that's perfect uh, then. That's perfect. I'll, have a hundred, I'll have that silver play button. We'll play- be back and we'll show it to you right here on the show. <laughs> there you go. Uh, do you have any questions for Ron Panic? Because you asked, like, you, you talked like once. No, so, we'll you take know what? any more questions from the audience. Yeah, too, if I'd anybody has anybody. To, yeah, to uh, answer more. Yeah, but no, no, like I said, the first time. I, I, for, of course, I met him at the overnight flea market, and then yep. uh, yeah. seeing the show live at Weekly Whiting, that was something. I mean, uh, cool. just the whole experience out there at nighttime. It was eerie out, windy, and just doing some maz- mm-hmm. some cool magic on stage. You can't beat that. So had a really great time out there. Thank you. It was a great time, and I want to thank everybody out at Wickedly Wild for having me again. Uh, I'll be back again this year. So. That's great. I think yeah. we're we should be back. It's too oh, soon to really the call. Be back. It's oh no, you got my yeah. birthday that day. Is it? Yeah, and there's other cons I won't mention that's been reaching out. There, to well, and, and it yeah. is. It's a heavy. It's the heavy, hollow, it's October season. is absolutely brutal. Yeah, because we were at a show literally every week, and yeah. and yeah. sometimes we were doing two appearances a week. A lot of stuff it, going. Yeah, down. so there's tons of stuff. We, um, I, we should be back. Should is the key word there, but Ron will be there. How I will. They, you... they 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 wanted me to, to 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 come back, and they haven't set their date yet. But we're we're you know we're talking about it. We talked about it at the end of of last season, uh, you know. And and I had a great time out there, and it was great because I thought it was so bloody cold out there. I and I thought you know you know during the day I'm like oh it's going to get colder once the sun goes down tonight, and I'm like this place is going to be a ghost town. I'm going to be out there, and there's going to be like you know it's going to be me and Bob, and we're going to be doing the damn show. <laughs> And I'm, I'm like, okay with yeah, that. 100%. I know, and I was, I'm fine with that too. I will perform. I don't care who's out there. I, you know, I'm all in. But it's more fun when there's a ton of people. But I was so thrilled that, because everyone else was like, "Oh no, no, no! This place will fill up at night." And it was the because they, they put it out. It's outside. We're in the street, right. and 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 that that street was filled up with people as far as the eye could see. Yes. And I was thrilled that you guys came out and hung out for the show because I know it was probably colder for you than it was for me because at least I'm moving around on stage. And uh, But when you're standing there in the audience trying to watch this, it's freaking freezing. You know, it's just cold as hell out there. So thank you for everybody who was at Wickedly Wilding like you guys. I mean, yeah. you know, it, if, was, it was a good time. If people want to keep up with your uh, current tour dates That's or somebody any was, appearances. Somebody was yeah. commenting about how often do you – because you're doing a lot of like – Horror cons and stuff like I do. that. I do horror um, cons, and I do a lot of different appearances, and I do other other things. We just announced last night I'll, I'll, I'll be up in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, 
for the Dorian Gray Art Show Saturday, March 28th. Mark that queen of the night because we're not too far away from Kenosha. You guys come on out there. We will, we'll, Is we'll, it a, it's at a club called, a, a space called 50 Below. <laughs> Speaking of cold. We'll, we'll, we'll mark that one. Yeah. Now, how often do you do, because people, like, especially because we're local at the station, people want to know how often do you do things local Chicago or... I, I do a lot in Chicago. Um. Uh, this is my first time up in, uh, up in Kenosha, up behind the uh, behind the Cheddar Curtain, as they say. Yes. Uh, in a while, because uh, <laughs> I, I travel far and wide, though I never know where the gigs are going to take do me. Do you post them all up on your Facebook? I do. Page uh, they'll be on. Not... They'll be on the events and on on fa- on the Facebook page, and I and I put them in my events on FitzgeraldRealm dot com. Maybe we'll panic. Let's do a WJOB. Um... Halloween bash yeah. this year. We'll book Ron and do some magic, and uh, we'll do a paranormal. Let's talk do it. Perfect. Yeah. I think. I think we were trying to talk about doing something for Halloween, twenty twenty, something fun. Maybe we'll. Maybe WJOB will get together and do saw Bob in half. That's uh, perfect. They. He wants you to. Saw, do you saw people in half, or do you just? <laughs> well, I, I. I do, but I. I use an. I use uh, an electric. I use a power. Perfect. Saw. Did you I, that's yeah. all. What do you? What if he misses? He never misses. What's your <laughs> missing? How often do you miss? Uh, you know, I mean, there could be blood. I mean, people come to see me because, you know, it's dark, sticky fun. There so you I, you know, I, he'll be okay. We'll make sure he's, Thank he's you. I, stitched look, back together for we, the next show. Yeah. People, they need me. I, I, I'm booking stuff up. So I will make sure that there are hot, naughty nurses standing on either side of us. So if something goes wrong, they will come in and bandage you up immediately. We appreciate that. I'll just no, go there for that. Not man. as much as me. No, Kyle, we, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. I just want to give a quick shout out to the man whose head you just saw for oh, fixing the, that's, that's, fixing uh, our they, problems yeah. earlier that's with Sam second. Michael back there. Hey, He's Sam, we really appreciate your right help here. back there. Him. So Sam's keeping his head, but sa- thanks for helping out and fixing the technical wow. stuff, Sam. Okay. He yeah. was in the area. And we so, appreciate and, it. And if people also, I wanted to mention, if you really want to know when I'm doing things and what's going on and get special exclusive offers and stuff, go get it, go to FitzgeraldRum.com, sign up on my email list. He's going to give you a free track. And, and then I'll send it you. You'll get it right in your inbox. You'll, you'll, you'll know when I'm doing shows and where and what's going on and when my next. Because I, I go between that and then making horror films and stuff like that. And I've got a new one it's called The Devil Frame, written and directed by Chicago filmmaker Rob Sepulveda that will be out sometime in this year. Okay, last thing. People want to book you for stuff that they're doing. How does somebody get a hold of you for your booking? Do you have an agent? You take your own emails. How do people get in touch? They, with they go through my website, and then you know they'll be directed to someone that will you know help them out. Our That's friendly great. customer service will help you out. Where we can cut heads off for you and eat razor blades. That's great. Do yeah. you eat razor blades often? Uh, I do it about every show now because the audience loves it so much. That's fair. That's uh, you, that was I your, saw that, that was yeah. his absolute favorite. It was it thing. was part yeah it was that part was of something. Wickedly Wilding. Yeah, that was his favorite thing you did. I he was like, "We're booking Rod," and I'm like, "Yeah, I know we're booking Rod." He's like, "He ate, he ate razor blades." I saw it with my own yeah. eyes. He did it. I do, and they're real razor blades, and they're really sharp, and it is really dangerous. It's a it's a bit of sideshow and and performance art and magic all together there. But it, it's 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 I do it all the time now because the audience loves it so much. People always walk away talking about that. You know, there's a few pieces in the show that always kind of kick people in the head, and that's certainly one of them. Yep. Ron, we are out of time. No. Yes. I want more. Can we have I another don't... hour? I... No. <laughs> no. Well, Coast to Coast is going to be coming on soon. We're the Ooh. local Coast to Coast broadcast station. Ooh, excellent. Uh, do you know? Do you listen to Coast to Coast? I, oh, of course. Yeah, that's that's one yeah. of my episodes. Little, George. little George Norrie. George's, there? yeah, yeah George's, George's. I miss Art Bell because man, it was, it was really. Fun when we were having a conversation last week on the show about does Art Bell ever come back and haunt George? One can only hope. Uh, that's I mean, all I've ever wanted. <laughs> uh, yes. I uh, wish you would do it in the middle of a show so we could just hear <laughs> George freak out in the middle of Coast to Coast. That would be just perfect. All right, Ron. I just want to thank you so much for coming out to Bob Dude. After Dark. It's Paper Covers Rock. Oh, stop. Oh. Here. Okay. There you go. Let me just... Wham! Look at oh, that. That's yeah. that's the occulty thing that I'm. Yeah, I'm kingly now. Thank you. All right. <laughs> you have the better. So I've been working on my spooky laugh since I started the show, and you just nailed the spooky laugh. I I, I have always had a spooky laugh. I mean, this thing. Like I say, this you thing always. This it was always looking for me because I had what it wanted. Because it, it just it came looking for me. I swear it did. Well, thank you so much. I hope yeah. you had a good time. I had a great time. When can we do it again? I'll be What's, back. I'll be back tomorrow night. I once a week. 
We do Bob what? after dark. We do, I, don't ask me to do Bob after dark. Seven nights a week now. Yes. Like, well, come on. You know, George, I got to give it to George. Everyone Gordy. out in the audience, tell him you want him on oh, like geez. every night. Come on, tell him. You, you, know, you got to give him some time <laughs> off so we can go do conventions and stuff and meet you guys. But I, yeah. I got to do the convention appearances. But you, uh, I love the you don't want to produce this show seven days a week. You got the morning show to do. Well, I bounce, I bounce around a lot during the daytime. So <laughs> I'm, I multi. I'm multi-talented when we it comes to We get you a cappuccino. Different time let's get you, let's get you on the show soon, then. Back. We'll get you back on the show. I love it. I yeah, love, yeah. I, I'll actually have more news about you know, the Devil Stuffy. Frame and, and other things that are coming we're gonna, up. We're going to talk about that the next time you're on the show. Absolutely. Do you have yeah. anything? How, you, I know you usually end the show by lighting your assistant on fire. You're not <laughs> lighting me on fire, I don't think. Ah, uh, where's my lighter? Oh, jeez. Yeah. So instead of lighting me on fire, do you have anything you'd like to say to the audience? Uh, thank you for showing up tonight, everybody. <laughs> Thanks. I love it that you guys are here watching us be, you know. You put him on the spot, right? He's used to being like, I'm not oh, even going to no. bring my assistant back. I'm just going to light her on fire and walk off stage. Uh, no, now like, that's it. And I now mean, I'm like, I want you to tell to talk to people. <laughs> I want to talk to people. Uh, well, I'll talk to them. I'll talk to them all day and all night long. I'm a chatty mofo, people. So, so am I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So come and see me live. I'm free range weirdness between the illusions. It's pretty. It's it, you know you saw. <laughs> Cop panic. Bob, always a great time. Uh, Ron, once again, thanks for coming on. And next time, yes, we'll have two Bobs because they'll be sawed in half. So we'll see. Stay tuned for that. Yes, we can. Yeah, we can draw and quarter him. We yeah, can do all kinds of Perfect. things. We can keep. That. We can just keep whittling him down until there's a whole like desk full of Bobs, like little baby Yodas, just all baby Bobs. Yeah, baby Bobs. <laughs> Yeah, that's guys. You're not gonna let that happen to me, right? Who's gonna host Bob After Dark then? You, just all of you. <laughs> you get. We're gonna cut you down into like seven pieces, and each each tiny little gnome Bob gets his own night. How's oh, that? Oh boy! All right. So thank you guys so much. Do you have anything else you wanted to add? You're just waving your hands. No, you know what? That was my perfect. That was my only wish for tonight. Uh, so all right, guys, just cutting him in half. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that. We'll All right, guys. How about so, a nice guillotine? We could cut off. Oh, oh, you want to see me chop off Bob's head, everybody? Oh my hmm? God! You want to see that happen? A little Alice Cooper action? <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> Thank you guys for watching Bob After Dark <laughs> Two. My mom and dad. I just want to wish you guys sweet dreams and to Tiff. No matter where you are in the world, I hope you have the sweetest dreams of them all. Thank you everybody for watching Bob After Dark. No Bob After Dark on Plug Night. We got to get tore down and get Ron back home. But remember, folks, the most important rule of the occult and of Bob After Dark is. Not all who wander are lost. Thank you so much for watching Bob After Dark. Stay spooky. Hello.